Hello, everyone. My guest today is Mariam Huckabayan. She is the founder of a company called Softer.io, an easy-to-use, no-code platform for building powerful applications on Airtable in 10 minutes. No learning curve, no design skills required. Mariam, you ready to take to the top? Yeah, thanks a lot, Nathan. Thanks a lot for the invite. You bet. So, how, I mean, this is a very sort of niche thing. There's no code, there's Airtable. Were you doing sort of Airtable consulting or something before this? How did you get into it? No, we weren't. In fact, we actually didn't start from Airtable. So originally, uh, both of the co-founders have been software engineers ourselves. So we have been just building software products um, for more than 10 years. And since so much repetition in every other company, in every other uh, application we built, and we kind of thought, why not have a platform where everything is offered as building blocks and then companies and individuals on top build only what's unique to their business. That's how we kind of started software in the first version we where we imagine for it to be really a kind of full stack application builder and having the database just inside software. But over time, like once we started talking to customers, understanding their needs, we just realized there is huge demand on having some kind of front end for the Airtable. So there is lots of people already using Airtable for their operations, for their daily use, daily life even. And uh, and yeah, that's where we started. So it's just one kind of one backend for us. It's the way we started, but up, um, for sure we are going to have other backends like Google Sheets, um, Notion potentially, external APIs, and also our own collections. But Airtable is really just kind of one first step for us. And how many customers do you have today? Uh, well, well, we have uh, more than 10K users uh, using the platform um, actively and several hundred paying customers. Um, yeah, that's, that's where we stand currently. That's great. And take me back to day one. When did you launch the company? Uh, we launched actually end of August. Uh, so it's almost like six, seven months where the product is out there. And the first version even wasn't a web app builder. It was just a static website builder. And that's that was kind of our first MVP. We launched it on product hand. We became number one product of the day. And uh, however, we have no, been no, building the product. This was, this was in 2020. Yeah, 2020, August 25th. So uh, yeah, end of, end of August. And prior to that, we have been building the product for about one and a half years, just bootstrapping and also a kind of not working alongside our full-time jobs. When you did the product hunt launch, what happened? How many views to the website? How many new signups? Yeah, so we got around 12K visitors. I actually have written a blog post about that, if I remember the numbers. Uh, and out of those, like we, I think we got around 10 paying customers, excluding us <laughs> being on the, as, on the paid plan. But yeah, around 10 customers. That wasn't that much, but it was... How many new signups? How many new signups? Uh, several hundreds. Okay. Got it. So 10 new paid. And, and what, are, what are paying customers paying you on average to use technology? Yeah, so on average, it's around what's right now is the 79 euro per month monthly plan or 65 per year. Um, so actually, we have just recently, it's almost a month that we have changed the pricing. Prior to that, it was a bit different pricing, a bit lower end on the lower end, but it was also the first version of the product. So now we kind of have identified more concrete customer types and really customer uh, target groups. And based on their needs, we have changed also our pricing model. And so what, uh, what last month, what MRR did you guys hit? So uh, let me not mention specifically like the numbers, um, but uh, it's, it's uh, more than several thousands. Let's put it. Let me put it this way. Yeah. I mean, can I, you said several hundred customers, 300, and you mm -hmm. said $79 price point. Can I multiply those together? That would be about $23,000 a month in revenue. Approximately. Okay. Do you think you can break 100,000 this year? We, yeah, that's the aim. Yes. <laughs> How will you do that? Where are you getting new customers today? Well, uh, so far, our main, like all of this growth has been really organic through word of mouth and through people sharing with their own community. So usually what happens if you search for software in Twitter, you will see what people talk about software. And usually like people, uh, we have really huge um, community which are really engaged and they build something they share with their own communities, talk about software. So, uh, so far, most of the growth has been through these kind of social and organic channels. We are also now Aaron, starting... Can you, name, can you be specific? Can you name what are two of these Facebook groups or Slack groups? Yeah, mainly there? Twitter. Now, Twitter has been the, the biggest audience group for us. Uh, the biggest audience has come from there. But right now, we are uh, as we expand it towards more SMB space as well, we have also had lots of customers coming from YouTube, um, people looking for different ways to build something with Airtable. And uh, yeah, going forward, we also are spent like very much rooting towards content SEO. This is something we started 
um, and like more organic. So we are fa in favor of really trying more the organic way of growth. Of course, we are going to experiment with ads, etc., and different ways of also influencer marketing and other channels. But really, the organic uh, growth, like long term, it's it's a product led growth type of company, and this is this is really at the core of the company. Now, have you guys bootstrapped this year, or did you raise capital? Yeah, we just recently, like recently in January, raised the first first round, our seed round. Uh, but before that, it has been all bootstrapped, and yeah, uh, we pay? already have. So, sorry, sorry, can you? How repeat? much did you raise? Uh, two point two million dollars. Okay, and why do you need two point two million dollars to build this? Why, why sell a big chunk mm -hmm. of your company? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. So we we have been at some point we have been thinking whether we should raise or not. But um, as you might know, like the knockout space is really booming, right? There is there is lots of competitors coming up. There is it, it, the space is really huge and it's moving, growing um, at an exponential pace. So first of all, the product itself is a really complex product. In order to really build something meaningful, so you, you can cover as many use cases as possible, you really have to have a team. And it, just technically and effort-wise, it's really something that we realized if we just bootstrap, it's it's going to be almost impossible to also outcompete the competition. And that is the main reason we we decided to go the VC road. Got it. When you guys raised, was that a priced equity round or a safe, a traditional safe? It, it's a priced equity round. Yeah. You did decide to price it. Why did you decide to price exactly. it instead of doing a safe? Uh, well, at the, at the time, we already kind of were at the stage of similar some other companies that we knew, uh, like we were able to roughly evade the company and um, yeah, come up with like, think where, where do we see ourselves, what valuation we potentially see for ourselves. And we just decided to go that route rather than yeah, postponing it because in yeah, long term, I think that's almost, almost similar in, in, in the end in terms and, of result. And so what did you choose to value the company at? I, I can't mention the name number specifically, but uh, yeah, it was it, it's, it's something that I mean, just com in comparison, there were some other companies that kind of were in the market in the similar space for three years, like two three years. They haven't even launched publicly, but within within just um, six months, we managed to reach already several k revenues and have quite already several thousands of users. So we were at a good point comparably with even some other like seed stage companies who had raised money previously so that kind of felt for us that yeah it would be a fair uh, kind of valuation and fair price point for us i won't push harder here but can you give us a range was it below above or below 10 million um approximately close close oh, right, to that. right <laughs> around okay fair enough walk walk me through your team who's building this with you so it's two co-founders. Uh, both of us are technical and product from a technical and product background. We have uh, engineering team. It's nine people, just nine people so far. Okay. Most of most of them engineers, um, two co-founder and UX person, and now hiring also for some more people. But no salespeople. No, no, it's not like it. No, I, I guess we in the next probably one year for sure. In the next years, I'm definitely thinking that there might. There probably won't be sales team unless we start working heavily with enterprises. But so far, it, it, it again, it's it's true growth and marketing channels, and it's heavily product led growth. Really, um, yeah, more more from the content side, from social, and all of the other aspects other than sales. Churn's really critical in this kind of business. People will test it; they'll do one air table sort of mock up on the front end, and then they'll leave. Right? What is your churn rate today, and how do you keep it low? Yeah, so the churn rate has been fluctuating. So it's it's changing from month to month. To be honest, uh, it's it's something around five percent, which is um, which is kind of typical. To if you look at also similar companies, um, however, this is something still work in progress. Right, we ha we're very early. We still are figuring out like typical customer target group for us, and also there are so many holes still in the product and in the onboarding. Even we we, we just didn't have any onboarding so far. We just re we are now only working on that. So we kind of, uh, our, our goal was really to put out something in the market, even the MVP as soon as possible to get feedback, to get customers using it and paying it and then really evaluate and validate for us what's the value, like does, does this work really, does this stick and then, and then really kind of deep dive and continue building the product. Got it. And I imagine as part of that $2.2 .2 million raised, you, you said things in your deck, like here's how we plan to spend the money to drive growth. So one of those obviously is to get new customers. So what do you think it's going to cost you, your fully weighted CAC, to get a new $80 a month customer? 
Yeah. Um, so until so far, uh, it, again, it has been just zero, zero. I'm not counting, of course, the manual work, but um, we we do expect to spend some. So I, I can't mention a concrete number, but basically, we are uh, heavily relying on having an onboard, having an um, growth through content and SEO, really like organic growth, but also um, spending the, the money on through ads as well, acquiring some customers. So it, it is going to be like in the range that uh, we we sell the products for. Miriam, what, so, what, 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 are, what are you comfortable spending to get an $80 a month customer? Um, well, I mean, I, I have to be honest. We haven't, tr- we haven't tried any, started yeah. any, any marketing. Miriam, no, I, know, I know that. So, <laughs> I know that. We, I, we I, have I, to I experiment, know. right? I know. My question is because this is this will this will tell us how aggressive you plan to be. I know you don't have any historical data. What I'm asking is, as a CEO, as a founder, you just raise money. You're trying to deploy it. Yeah. What are you comfortable spending to get a new eighty dollar a month customer? What would you spend? Yeah. Well, we are going to start spending like five to ten k a month um, on ads, I assume, like and also on all the other channels to experiment and see what works. And once we find out something that works, and um, then we're going to scale that. Obviously, I know. I know that. But okay, so. My question is, what are how aggressive are you willing to spend to get a new eighty dollars a month customer? Are you comfortable spending a thousand dollars to get an eighty dollars a month customer? Do you only want to spend eighty dollars? Okay, uh, eighty dollars a month. Customer? I, see, I see what you mean. No, yeah. obviously not. Like we are not gonna like no, uh, for sure not. So we do want to stay on a good rate that we are also at some point we are profitable as well, even though that's not really the end goal, but um, like double or triple or that. For the beginning, but then at some point we want to be able to write what? that the monthly price. Yeah, got it. But so at some point to, we want two hundred forty bucks, one hundred fifty to two hundred forty bucks to get eighty dollars a month customers. What you'd be comfortable spending? Well, probably in the beginning, but then at some point we want to bring it at the level that it's much much lower than than the price they would pay for sure. So we want to have the uh, ROI positive the price that they would pay monthly or annually. Uh, monthly or annually, it's it's up to the customer. Well, no, but it's very different. You you spending one year of ACV to acquire customers is very different than spending one month of contract value to get the customer. Uh, can can you repeat the question, please? Again? I'm, try- I'm just trying to get a sense of how you plan to scale, and if that's via paid ads, I'm trying to understand how aggressive you're willing to be in this space. The keyword Airtable and Airtable tools is very competitive. It costs a lot mm-hmm. of money to run CPC ads in Google for this keyword. So I'm just trying to get into your brain about your risk tolerance. Are you comfortable spending one year? of ACB to get a customer up front, or do you want to be have not a lot of risk and recover your CAC on day one when they pay for that first $80 mm-hmm. a month? No, potentially taking the risk and bringing more customers up front and then and then recovering from that. Yeah, really interesting. Well, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. It sounds like you're also expanding outside yeah. of just Airtable. So you have other keywords you can go after as well, which would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, great. Um, we talked about Sherman, talked about that. We talked about your team. Talk to me about the founding. Again, founders at the beginning, it's always difficult to have the equity conversation. How did you guys do that? Or did you just split it 50-50? Yeah, exactly. So we always have from the beginning, we, we do believe we are both contributing equal ways and we just have split the company equally. I see. Very cool. Well, on that note, Mariam, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, um, the um, Crossing the Chasm. The what? Crossing the Chasm. Crossing the Chasm is a good one. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Say again, sorry. Is there a CEO that you're following or studying? Yeah. Uh, um, um, well, <laughs> uh, there are many. Uh, there's not someone I specifically follow. Like there, are, there are many. I may many on. Do you want to? Do you want to pick one or move on? Yeah, let's move on. Okay, number three. What's your favorite online tool for building software? For building software, uh, I like. Um, well, I like <laughs> uh, Muro a lot. We use that a lot. Can you spell it? Company. Miro and Airtable, I would say. Like Airtable, yeah, is okay. what we use. Can you spell the tool? Uh, Miro, M I R O I. M I R O. M I R O, great. Okay, cool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> four or five. <laughs> that's not healthy. <laughs> well, if you have kids, that's, uh, that's usually becoming a norm. How many kids do you have? Two. Two kids. Okay, and married? Yes. And Miriam, do you mind me asking how old you are? <laughs> I, I, well, around 30. <laughs> okay. The, the reason I ask you is I want you to take us back to your 20-year-old self. What's something that you wish that she knew? Um, 
yeah, I guess if I were uh, to uh, advocate 20 year old myself, what I would do, I would probably just right away join startups and just experiment with different companies, build up, build something on my own. I think I, I started just jumped into that space much l- later. I would I would change that. Guys, softer.io, a tool to help you take your Airtable in a no-code way, generate a website, and moving into other industries as well. They raised $2.2 million bucks at around a $10 million valuation to build this thing out. Team of nine, Merriman, our co-founder, split the company 50-50. They've got over 300-ish customers today, 10,000 total users. They all pay about 80 bucks a month, so call it you know, 10, 20 grand a month right now on revenue. As they look to continue to scale, they'll start turning on paid ads, move into additional verticals, and we'll see what happens. Mariam, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks a lot. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it, and the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell mode notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.